Hello, and welcome to this brief introduction to logic models in public health. In the next few minutes, we will define and describe logic models, discuss why we might create a logic model, talk about when to create one, highlight some important considerations, look briefly at the steps to building your logic model, see a couple of examples, have a quick quiz, and end with resources for further exploration. First, what is a logic model? It's a graphic showing a sequence of events that brings about change. A logic model depicts your program's logic and shows why your strategy is a good solution to the problem. It's a diagram with text that describes and illustrates the logical or causal relationships among program elements and the problem to be solved, thus defining measurements of success. There are other terms for logic models. Here is a list of other terms, so call it what you will. There are different types of logic models. In addition to different names, they can have many different looks. A logic model can be set up vertically or horizontally, but no matter what form it's in, a logic model shows relationships between activities and outcomes. Different shapes are used, including circular designs or cultural adaptations such as storyboards. The level of detail contained in the logic model can vary a great deal. To determine the level of detail you need, consider your audience. Are you presenting to community members, or to your board of health, or are you depicting your unit's work and developing very specific measures? An agency-wide logic model is at a high level and not detailed. A program or project one needs enough detail to determine what data to collect but not to capture every task the way a detailed process flow would. Well, why create one? Logic models are useful for different purposes. A logic model can describe a program or an entire agency, communicate with decision makers and the public, and help you align activities to your outcomes. It also brings benefits. Creating it can be a true team-building effort and lead to deeply shared understanding among those who work on it. It can help you focus on activities that are most important and guide use of data to review results and make improvements. A few warning notes here. Just because your logic model shows a connection between what you do and the outcomes you aim for doesn't actually make it so. And there are many factors that are beyond our control. Also, having a logic model is not enough. It's what you do with it that makes it useful. And that's where data collection and reporting come in. Lastly, a logic model is never perfect out of the gate. And it is easy to get caught up in perfecting a logic model. Resist that temptation. You can improve it over time. Get going and start using it to reap those benefits. When is a good time to create a logic model? One possibility is when you are developing a program or a project. Another is for an exi existing program that doesn't have one. Perhaps your funder requires a logic model as part of a grant. It can be a description to help create your measures from input through activities, outputs, and various levels of outcome. And it's a living document that will change over time depending on your activities and your results. You might think of a logic model as similar to a financial budget. You build it based on what you know at the time, and then you look at the results regularly, and you probably have to adjust it. Here are some important considerations. Logic models and the work they depict should be aligned with an agency's vision, mission, and goals. Context is crucial to consider, although it's not always depicted. The factors and trends in the larger environment may influence program success or failure. What external factors will hinder or help? Are there other services addressing the issue? Is your Board of Health supportive? Does the community perceive a need for the work? Are there proven effective interventions? We will touch on the program theory question in the coming slides. These are the central parts of a logic model. Inputs, activities, outputs, outcomes, and measures. A common way to develop a logic model is from left to right. 
Say the condition or problem is unacceptable rates of foodborne illnesses. And at the left, we see the activity is restaurant inspections. Start by asking, but why do we inspect restaurants? And the answer is, we inspect restaurants so that conditions in the restaurants don't create unsafe foods. Or, you can use if-then logic, tracking again from left to right. If we inspect restaurants, then conditions in the restaurant won't de create unsafe food. And if conditions in the restaurant don't create unsafe foods, then the public is sold food that is safe to eat. And if the public is sold food that is safe to eat, then there are fewer incidents of foodborne illnesses. Here is a complete skeleton of a logic model. At the left, underlying the logic model, is your program theory. What is the belief that justifies your strategies and activities? Why do you think your activities are important? What is the ultimate result you want from this program? Next, moving to the right, we see inputs. What do you start with to operate this program? What are the resources? What are the operating guidelines, like laws, grant deliverables, or your limitations? Following the arrows, we see activities. What work are you going to do? Here, decide how detailed you want this to be. Are you going to have your logic model at the unit level or at a higher level? Next, we see outputs. What is the end product or service created by your activities? You will need to collect the numbers that you need for both the numerators and denominators. And then, outcomes. Short, mid, and long term. Here are some cues about the content of your outcome measures. What leads to better quantity, cost effectiveness, or quality of services? How can you improve? What leads to a change in knowledge, attitudes, skills, behaviors, organizational practice, and policy? Finally, why are you doing it? What is the ultimate health outcome you seek? Now, here's an example from local public health. In this example, the problem and its context are at the left. There has been an increase in head injuries. Only 4% of riders use helmets. Intersections are problematic and the community is discussing the problem. There is a new commissioner and research findings that lead to a problem theory, which is if families are provided helmets and education on the issue, more children will wear helmets while biking. We have here inputs, activities, outputs, and three levels of outcome that read from left to right. At the far right, we see the long-term desired outcome in very specific language reduced unintentional injuries and deaths from pedicycle accidents. The measures are rates of hospitalization and mortality from pedicycle injuries. And using if-then statements, we can follow the program logic from left to right. Tracking the measures will show us over time whether our program logic bears results. Let's make a quick check of your learning. Which of the following is not a core part of a logic model? Inputs, context, program theory, outputs, measures, outcomes, strategies. If you selected strategies, good job! A strategy is part of a strategic plan or a work plan rather than part of a logic model. Here are some excellent resources for creating and using your logic models. We look forward to hearing from you if you would like further technical assistance on this or other performance management topics. This presentation is part of a performance management in public health training series presented by Washington's Public Health Centers for Excellence and funded by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The centers are located in the Spokane Regional Health District and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Our goals are to help local health jurisdictions and tribal agencies improve their results, prepare to meet public health standards, and achieve accreditation. In addition to this training series, we offer technical assistance and resources in performance management to improve public health outcomes. If you would like to talk with us about how we might assist your organization, contact information is on the preceding slide.